What do you want to start with? <laughs> uh, we have a comment that says no one cares about storms east of I-35. <laughs> Very true. Um, <laughs> technically speaking, uh, east of I-35 chase terrains. You sucks. don't. What was it? Uh, so our one of our old professors, Doctor Clazel. Oh um, yeah. Good old Kevin. Um, he had two rules. You don't chase east of 35, and you don't turn your back to a tornado. And if you do either, he's finding you a dollar. Yes. <laughs> I, did he start that, that back up? He was. I think he did. Okay. I, I, he said he I, was I, I, I've seen him posting to. on Twitter a, a, a few times recently. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he has a, a thing where on weather Twitter, which is, as already mentioned, a horrible place to be, um, he has a thing where if you you know post a picture of your back to a tornado or you're east of 35 he finds you a dollar and he collects all that over I don't know, a year or so and donates it to some charity of some kind i will i i hate, I hate to tell dr clazelis i would gladly pay the dollar to get a selfie photo with a tornado i'm oh, sorry that's yeah yeah, yeah. That dollar is going to a good cause. <laughs> it's going, yeah, it's going to a good cause, and I, I gotta have one. Now the chasing east of thirty-five one. part. Uh... That's a little sketchier because it is, you know, it's it's wooded and hilly, and it's it's not good terrain. Yeah. For those who don't know, once you hit I, once you're west of I thirty-five is kind of where the tree line in the U.S. ends. If you were to look at a map. Anything west of 35 is, it tends to be a little bit more dry and arid, so you don't have as much tree development. But once you get east of 35, I mean, oh my goodness, especially southeastern Oklahoma, nightmare. You think you're chasing a Mississippi. It's mm -hmm. awful. And uh, the, uh, the idea of um, Chaser's Jungle, right, where you, you're driving along, you, you physically can't see the tornado. That's, that's the biggest problem is you can't see it you know, if it shifts directions or something, you don't know. You have only your radar to tell you that. And, of course, um, radar has a five- to six-minute delay on it. So, until we get phased array. Okay. Yeah. We could, We should talk about that, actually. Um, Fa phased array radar is going to be the next big thing. That it's going to take them 25, 30 years to implement it. But once it, once it comes out, man, it's going to change the game. So... Maybe uh, maybe explain phase array radar for yeah, someone so who doesn't know which we currently because I don't actually have never heard of this. Currently, what we do with our current what we call WSR eighty eight D radars is it's a, it's a satellite dish and it, it it's at an angle looking up at the sky, and what happens is we set it at a certain angle, it does a rotation around, scans the sky, then it goes to a different elevation angle, goes around. Scans the sky, goes up again, goes around, scans the sky. Then it has to come back down and scan that same level again. So you're getting that, you're not getting the minute by minute details there because you're getting one radar scan, then it has to go scan all the other loops before you can get back down. What phased array does is it is a sort of a, a cylinder now that projects a beam out instead of just at one elevation, it sends a beam out at all elevations and it scans and so you can get quicker data because you're you don't have to wait for it to go up in elevation and so these are being tested specifically uh, in a multitude of different places um the university of oklahoma has one they're testing it is on the uh the um uh, oh what is it uh see i'm tired i'm blanking on the the name but there's a building next to the weather center that whenever there's weather going ongoing, you'll see it spinning and, and oh. testing it. Yeah. The problem I mean, is, mean. yeah. The, the the problem is, with with any governmental organization, and it, it, don't get me wrong, they cost a lot of money. Um, I mean, it's not like normal radar is any. It's it's, it's not it's any not cheaper. Pennies, man. It's not any cheaper. It might even be more expensive. To what, be honest. What I, I'm they... not entirely sure on the, the details on that, but I think I think I feel. Like I heard somebody say, ten million for. A, uh, it wouldn't for surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me. I don't know if that's you true. Factor in, you got to because you have to have the radar dish and you have the computer software and everything mm -hmm. that goes into that. But phased array, whenever it comes out, whenever 
however long that is, it's going to change the meteorology field because we'll get better data quicker, which is I've the never, most important I've thing. never heard of this. How did you hear about this? Yeah, it's just, uh, it's the next big, I, I, I've always been kind of a radar guy. I love radar. Um, I've been looking at weather radar my entire life. And so I've been digging into, you know, what's upcoming. And, and phased array is the big next thing whenever it does come out. Again, with governmental bureaucracy, anything, things that cost a lot of money. And meteorology itself is a very slow moving field. Heck, it took us so super, super long to even just adjust to cloud computing. Like, it, cloud computing is a relatively new thing in the meteorology field. How long has that been around? I mean, you know, we we, we got a long way to go on that too. Like, I, I, I genuinely think um, AI... AI and also, um, I know I know it's a buzzword, but like a quantum computers or like particle computers. Mm. If we could run models, even even you know twenty percent faster than we can currently, like that's that's big. And yeah. so the fact that um, some of these some like some of the stuff down the pipeline is cool. We're we're living in a cool time. Meteorology is going in a great direction, man. The technological advancements, it's gonna be huge for the field. And and I guess segueing back into our, our conversation, that's why chasing in wooded areas is so dangerous because yeah. you don't have up to the minute radar information. That dang storm, tornadoes occlude, they can dive southward. You need that minute by minute information, or you have to be able to see the storm to be able to tell that, mm -hmm. which which hats off to people who, who decide to chase down in, in the Mississippi and Alabama and all that. You couldn't pay me to do that. That is so dangerous to chase down there because the amount of trees down there and the storm motions. You got storms moving 60, 70 miles an hour down there. It's crazy. 